On this episode of Lockdown Angels, the Angels seem to have forgotten how to win. Tyler Anderson's a winner. He's going to the All-Star game. What's changed with Tyler Anderson this year compared to last year? And could the Reds be a potential trade partner with the Halos? We're going to talk about that. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, it is. And yes, we are. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Sirius XM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Time to subscribe and become a Locked On every day. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with John and I and be a part of the conversation. And today's show's Brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. And as the playoffs wind down and the sports stop sporting like we want them to, they have something for you this summer. FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Thank you for being here for this episode of Locked on Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Fresh Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Hey, we've been fans of this team for years. It's our third season here at Locked on Angels, talking Angels baseball Monday through Friday, every single weekday with you. On today's show, Tyler Anderson is an all-star. How did he become one after his 2023? We've got some stats to share with you, and of course, we're excited because it's trade season, Michael, and we're talking with Jeff Carr of Locked On Reds about a potential Reds Halos trade. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But first, let's get into that game from last night. The Angels fell to the Rangers 9-4 to at home. Yeah, Davis Daniel, our boy, was on the mound, and it started kind of ugly for him. He gave up a two-run home run to Corey Seager. Rangers immediately, top of the first, are up 2 nothing. Then bottom of the, sec- or bottom of the second, uh, Logan Ohapi is up with one out. He singles. Brandon Drury follows him with a single. And then Mickey Moniak wakes up and decides to hit a two-run triple <laughs> down into that right, right field corner. And it's tied at two. And then Joe Adele, waking up as well, decides right. to single and knock in Moniak. They were interviewing Tyler Anderson on the TV side and everybody was saying they should probably just keep him on the broadcast because yeah, the no Angels kidding. looked fantastic in that inning. And then the fourth inning happened, John, and Davis Daniel was cooking up until this point, but then that inning is when all the wheels fell off. Yeah, unfortunately, it was a Davis downer, unfortunately, <laughs> but they tied the game on a balk against Davis Daniel. He fell forward on the mound trying to throw it but then wasn't able to he did release the ball but it was kind of after a double clutch felt bad for him out there uh when that happened the rangers took the lead on an rbi by low nathaniel low four to three rangers this uh, brought out a mound visit from barry enright with two outs the rangers added another run on an rbi single that made it five to three then marcus Simeon made it a five run inning with a two run single that made it seven to three mike it knocked out Davis Daniel. Not a great start. Three and two thirds innings pitch. Seven earned runs. What happened in this game? He was throwing a lot of strikes, but did he get too much of the plate? What do you say? It seemed like he was getting too much of the plate. He had at one point a first strike to 11 of the first 14 hitters. And so he's doing the, what the Angels want him to do. He's following that philosophy. I just think he got too much of the plate in this game, John. And mm. the Rangers are a really good hitting team. They haven't been great this year. But if you if you miss your spots, they're going to take advantage of that. Similar to what we mm-hmm. saw with Reed Detmers earlier this year. Detmers was hitting his spots or getting them to swing a little bit outside of the zone. And Davis Daniel was throwing strikes, but these strikes were a little bit too much of the heart of the plate or a little bit too much of like the inside of, of the plate right in the hitter swing path. And so they made some great contact against him. And so I think the philosophy is right. Now it's just a matter of him maturing and being able to hit the spots that he needs to hit and not hanging some of the breaking balls that he did. Do you think it's a matter of the difference between triple a double a and the majors? Do you think that, it's something that he can perfect a little bit with more experience. What do you think is the issue here? Considering, you know, hitting, hitting the strike zone is important, but there's a level in which 
you're all over that zone, guys are going to figure you out. Is, is he missing a pitch? Is it something like that? Like, does he need a good put away pitch or something? That's kind of the narrative that I've seen. Yeah. I think the put away pitch is the narrative for the entire angel starting rotation. <laughs> and they don't have a pitch that can put batters away. We saw Tyler Anderson pitch in an incredible way this weekend against the Cubbies. And it was his changeup. That was his put away. Yeah. And Davis Daniel doesn't have, a 99 mile an hour fastball to blow you away. If he's going to throw to the top of the zone, he's got to hit the top of the zone. Yeah. And what happened was that he missed the top and he got top ish. <laughs> right. But yeah, you throw that ish, you know, it's going to get hit. Right. And so <laughs> careful. Yeah. That's <laughs> Davis Daniel. And so he did some of that in the minor leagues. If you go back and look at some of his triple a starts, there were a yeah. lot of five run six inning performances and a lot of that has to do with it is the PCL there's a lot of offense that happens there I think that Davis is on the right track but I also think Johnny that he just needs to continue to grow in his maturity and hitting his spots and this is where his camaraderie with Logan Ohapi can be great I think mm -hmm. came out he came out at the right time because the next batter was Jonah Anaheim crusher and he <laughs> up and he struck him out and so that was a great plate appearance problem is is that and this is why it's always been the angels are lacking a put away pitch we saw it against the cubbies this weekend they scored five runs in one of those games on two outs every single mm -hmm. and the, the rangers did this last night they had two outs and they took advantage of two out hits two out singles two out doubles two out rbi opportunities and that's why these angel pitchers need a pitch that they're not throwing all of the time, but a pitch that's going to surprise the batter or a pitch that they can't catch up to. Right now, I think Davis Daniel is learning how to be a major league pitcher, which is why I'm okay with him being on the roster and him being in the starting rotation and him having an outing like this because what he showed us against the Tigers is that he has the stuff to be able to dominate teams. He has the ability to hit his spots. He just has to Greg Maddox those spots. If you can, <laughs> right? Greg Maddox didn't have any huge pitches or strong pitches he just was able to spot it so well that it would confuse the the batters that he was thinking i don't want to talk about greg maddox considering the angels have been maddoxed twice <laughs> in the last week but uh I, your point stands there now carson fulmer did come into this game he surrendered two more runs later on so that made it nine to three bottom of the seventh mike everybody's favorite anthony rendon <laughs> was back in this game he got the first his first rbi in his return uh, with a single there. So that was nine to four. The angels then loaded the bases with two outs. Sean Owell took a walk uh, to load the bases. Kevin Pillar came up, struck out on a big curve ball. Yep. Uh, that was, he went fishing for, unfortunately. So the game ended with the score at nine to four. We're going to talk about our, our big takeaways here. And I think my big takeaway is I like Anthony Rendon back at leadoff, Mike. I think that that's, Kind of a good spot for him. I look at what him and Nolan Shonowell were able to do back to back in terms of actually seeing pitches because that's been the issue with the Angels over the last week, especially in terms of offense. I talked about it yesterday. The difference between Friday and Sunday versus Saturday against the Cubs. So the Angels were seeing some some pitches, and so Tony Two Bags knows how to work a count. Maybe it'll last, you know. 15 games before he gets hurt again. I don't know what the over-under is going to be on that, but the fact is he knows how to work a count, and I appreciate seeing that. Even, even you know, popping out or whatever, it, at least he made the guy work a little bit, and that's yeah. what's been missing yeah. from this team. So I am glad to see Anthony Rendon back. I did want to share this. So I noticed that in his first five games this season, you remember he went hitless, and everyone said, let's stand up for Rendon and give him a round of applause, and it was about 50 50, I would say, right. <laughs> on that yeah. night. But ever since those first five games where he went hitless, he ended up going 357 average, 413 on base, 411 slugging. Now, that does not involve home runs, obviously. Right. And an 823 OPS before he got hurt. Now, that is about 20 games or so. So it's not a large sample size. But He's been productive when he's on the field. I hope he can continue to be that for the Halos, and I hope he stays on the field. So that was my big takeaway from this game. Yeah, my big takeaway, Johnny, was I, again, like seeing 
Davis Daniel on the mound. I like seeing him learn how to pitch. I like seeing him throw strikes. I like seeing him have good conversations with Barry Enright and Logan Ohapi. It can be easy to be frustrated with his performance last night, but I would rather see him in the majors trying to figure it out than in the minors. So the biggest takeaway for me, Johnny, is I can't wait until we can get some of these guys that we know aren't going to be here off of this roster via trades so hmm. that we can see the players who are going to be on this roster this year, next year, and the following years continuing to play, which is why I don't mind having Anthony Rendon on this roster and in the lineup because he's going to be with us at least a couple more years and why I wasn't bothered by Miguel Sano getting DFA because he's just going to be somebody that was a warm body that was filling a spot, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm looking forward to Mike Trout coming back. I want to see what this lineup can actually do together and I know that that's been the narrative the last few years. Trout, Rendon, Otani not able to play with each other. I want to see a Logan Ohapi and a Zach Neto and a Sean Owell and a Trout and a Rendon. They were near 500 when these guys were in the, the starting lineup together. And so I, I'd love to see what would happen over a consistent amount of games to see the Angels really put something together. So can't wait till they get some of these guys off of the roster, trade them away. We're going to talk about trades in the third segment of this episode, but I, I'm looking forward to seeing these young guys continuing to develop and improve because they need the opportunity to continue to develop and improve and get the, getting these guys like a Drury out of the way so that you can have some of the young guys come up or have some flexibility, I think will be a great move for the angels moving angels moving forward. Yeah. I think about the Rangers and I think about, you know, they signed Simeon, they signed Seager, but it wasn't just those two. It's at Elise Garcia. It's Jonah Heim. It's yeah. Nathaniel Lowe, right? It's these guys all kind of contributing at the same time. So you had this mix of, Hey, let's bring in two really solid free agent veterans who are going to be the centerpieces of this team and then support them with the young staff that they have on the Rangers. So that was a nice reminder of seeing that against them on, on Monday night. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. The Angels are playing the Rangers again tonight, 638 Pacific time. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on Sirius XM with the SXM app. Just search Angels. Coming up on Locked On Angels, Tyler Anderson is an all-star. But what's different this year compared to last year? And should we be concerned? Mike and I have some concerns, and we're going to share those with you coming right up. Locked on Angels is brought to you by FanDuel. John and I love sports. Obviously, we're doing a sports podcast talking about baseball. We never want sports to stop. That's why we hate when the Angels have an off day. Even if they're terrible, it's boring on off days. We want sports, and that's why we love FanDuel. FanDuel allows John and I to keep the sports going whenever we want. All we got to do is open up the app and dream up any bets, any time that we're in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up not just John and I, but all customers with a boost or bonus daily. That's right. That's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So you can head to FanDuel.com and make the most out of your summer. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. This is the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And every day, if you haven't done so already, it's time to make the switch to Locked On Sports Today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program just for you to bring you the biggest stories across the sports world from camp misanalysis, opinions, news, all the stuff you enjoy when it comes to sports talk. It's free on YouTube 24-7 or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Lockdown Podcast Network where it's your team every day. And speaking of your team every day, the Angels are playing the Rangers once again tonight, 6.38 Pacific time. I think it's Rowanzi Contreras versus Max Scherzer. That should be that should be fun. That should be a fun uh, game to recap tomorrow, but we'll be here and we'll be watching it just like you can. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. No surprises, but Tyler Anderson was selected to the American League All-Star team. It was his second selection. He went as a Dodger in 2022. It's why the Angels were like, ooh, let's pick that guy up. <laughs> He's having a great season, Johnny. Eight and eight. 281 ERA. He's got a 151 ERA plus. It means he's 51% better than league average, which is fantastic. 35 earned runs, 47 balls, 77 strikeouts, and 112 innings pitched. And when he was selected in 2022, John, he was nine and one with a Ooh. 315 ERA, 32 earned runs, 15 walks, 77 Ks. 
91 and one third innings pitched. That's pretty amazing. 77 strikeouts in both seasons at this point yeah. of the season when he was selected to be an all-star. Mike, 47 walks this year versus 15. Only 15. In two years ago. I wow. can't, I, Tyler Anderson throws 15 walks in one game. How does feels like it? How, <laughs> how does that happen? <laughs> so Mike, it, it is quite the turnaround from last season because this time last year he was four and two with a five to five ERA at yeah. 49 earned runs, 37 walks, uh, 68 strikeouts in 84 innings pitch. So what's changed between 2023 in 2024 how did tyler anderson find this success well it all begins with the changeup. you yep. alluded to it earlier that's a good out pitch for him not just in terms of getting a strikeout but inducing the weak contact that has really helped improve his ground ball rate and we'll talk about that in a second but the change up here anderson found a feel for that change up once again now according to baseball savant slash stat cast you know how there's a run value attached to mm -hmm. pitches in the situation that a pitcher uses that pitch in well in 2023 he had a decent plus five run value on his changeup this year mike plus 12 so wow. essentially you can kind of think of that as hey tyler anderson's got a threat of plus 12 runs against him and he uses the changeup to get out of the situation. That's kind of the way you can think about that. Wow. Uh, batting average against the changeup last year was 238. The batting average against this year, 186. So anything under 200, I'll take it. And then the vertical drop has actually improved. It's got one more inch of drop on the changeup and then less horizontal movement. So since he's a lefty, there's kind of that left to right movement. So it's more straight down as opposed to moving left and right as much as it did last year. And then he's got the the cutter is also a better pitch this year. Last year, the run value on that was negative two. This year, positive two. So an improvement there as well. That has more drop and more horizontal break this year than it did last year. So that's also an improvement because you do want that cutter moving from left to right if you're going to throw it. Every time you say drop, I hear the Beastie Boys drop. Okay, <laughs> sorry. That's where my mind was at. Okay, let's talk about the fastball, John, because he doesn't have a really strong fastball. No. However, it has improved this year. 23, it was a negative 12, so not great at all. This year, in 2024, it's a negative 2. Mm -hmm. So you still don't want it being the negative, but it has been a pitch that has been better for him this year. And talk about movement. It's a tighter fastball than it was last year. There's less break, there's less drop, and it means that it goes where Anderson wants it to go, right? which is a beautiful thing because when it doesn't, that's when you see the walks start to pile up with Tyler Anderson, right? Yeah, exactly. And the ground ball rate has also improved. It's better this year at thirty, nearly 37%. Last year, it was about 30%. So he's wow. getting ground balls at 7% more of a rate this year. He has... Had a really great first half, Mike. He's definitely deserving of the all-star nod. But as far as the Angels go and what they plan on doing with him or not plan on doing with him, right? Uh, there's some things that make us nervous. And first of all, it kind of begins with the fielding independent pitching. You've heard us talk about FIP yep. on this show many times. It's similar to ERA, but focuses on what the pitcher himself can control. So that means walks strikeouts, hit by pitches, and home runs. And it asks the question, how effective is this pitcher at preventing walks, home runs, and hit by pitches versus causing strikeouts? So if there were never any balls put in play and Anderson purely had control over the entire game, that's kind of what FIP would be in mm -hmm. terms of ERA. So his FIP is 4.53. Yeah. That's pretty high. Anything above like a three and a half, you want to start kind of going, eh, that's that's not great. Now, this is reflected in his walk, strikeout, and home run rate. His home run rate is actually lower than it was last year, 2.6%, uh, or one home run for every nine innings that he throws. The strikeout rate is 16.8. That's about 6.2 strikeouts per nine innings. The walk rate kind of right in line with where it was last year, 10.3%. That's about 3.8 or almost four walks per nine 
for Tyler Anderson. Now well, let's talk about his expected numbers. Now these are numbers that are are numbers that you've really paid attention to, Johnny, and mm-hmm. you've helped me to learn what they are. So Anderson is outperforming the expected numbers on his pitches. So here's an example: fastball. The actual average against his fastball is two thirty five, which is so great. It's a great batting average, right? Yeah. But the expected is 270, which right. means that it could be worse, but yes. he's had some luck, had some great defense behind him, right? That's kind of what this number tells us. Change up, the actual batting average is 186, but the expected batting average is 235. Again, there's some luck involved. There's some great defense involved. There's some bad swings involved. And so there's a combination of a lot of things. So a lot of that is factoring into this all-star nod for Tyler Anderson in this all-star season for Tyler Anderson, similar to what he had in 2022. He had some luck, did some good things. His FIP wasn't as high in 22 than it is this season, but it's nice to see him performing better than the expected numbers. So the question really for angel fans is, should we just be happy with Tyler Anderson's performance with these (laughs) numbers and the actual results? Or are these indicative of some luck and some maybe bad luck and some regression coming after the all-star break. What do you think, John? Yeah, this is my biggest concern, Mike, is that if the angels don't do anything with Tyler Anderson, they're going to get stuck with somebody who is inevitably going to find himself throwing a fastball that gets hit at a 270 average against. And yeah, yeah, it might not get all the way up there, but again, Anderson is outperforming what he is expected to do. I, you mentioned the 2022 season with the Dodgers and I looked at the expected numbers and I would say they were almost right in line with the actual numbers. Some of them were higher, some of them were lower, but it was pretty much like Anderson was doing what he was expected to do and he was doing it very, very well. This year, it's very concerning that he's outperforming all of his expected numbers. So on, on one hand, I'm like, you know what? Maybe he can just keep doing it. Maybe he can just yeah, keep going. Yeah. At the same time, Mike, there's so many teams out there who could use a starting pitcher to help them compete for the playoffs and get them there. And I think that's what the Angels have to do with Tyler Anderson. I know that article came out from Bob Nightingale of USA Today. Uh, there's a reason why we call him Boob Nightingale because he gets information wrong or will spell somebody's name wrong. So, you know, he had a lot to say over the offseason about who the Angels were going to get and what they were going to do. And, Obviously, a lot of those things didn't happen. Right. Uh, so I, I kind of question if the Angels aren't going to do anything with Tyler Anderson. Are we going to see the regression settle in for him? I don't want to be around to find out. I think that they should trade him, get the value that they can out of him. Now, he's an all star now, Mike. Like, why wouldn't you? want to go and trade him right you're almost 20 games under 500 and you're not going to be competitive for the rest of the year you're not going to be competitive next year and so this is a this is a Shohei Otani light convert light 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 conversation remember how you screwed up Shohei and didn't trade (laughs) I can't speak because we were excited that they went for it. (laughs) we were yes we were and I was glad that they tried to go for it it was the first time that we were excited about this team in a while however this is very clear and the decision to trade him is very clear And because there's potential for regression makes it even more clear. And he's under contract for another year and a half, which brings his value up and he's pitching well. So angels need to do the right thing and make a move with Tyler Anderson. He's only 13 million a year too. So he's doing these, these results on a $13 million contract. I think teams would be jumping at the chance to get Tyler Anderson. Obviously, Johnny and I are numbers people on this uh, podcast. And if you're a numbers person, whether you love numbers or you're not too familiar with stats and with figures and numbers, doesn't matter because prize picks is the greatest place to go. It's so easy to play on prize picks. It's America's number one fantasy sports app. There's over 5 million members on this on this app. John and I are two of those members. We would love for our everydayers to join us. It's really fun. Super exciting. You can get on all the action, any sport at any time, whether you're a baseball person, obviously you're here if you're a baseball person, or basketball, football, hockey, whatever you like. You can now win 100 times your money on prize picks, and all you got to do is pick four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000, and you need that right now, right? That would be great, especially with you're running your AC. It's really hot. I'm sure that you need some extra money. So 
all you have to do with prize picks is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and you're locked in. We've talked about this on this show, but it's super easy. They give you a half of a projection. So if it's going to say like, hey, Trout's going to hit a home run, it would say he's going to hit a half of a home run. So you can pick more or less. Will he hit one or will he not hit one? And it's super easy. You can use it anytime. You can log in at any time. Strikeouts are included. RBIs are included. First inning runs are included. If Griffin Canning's pitching, make sure you say yes. There's going to be a first inning run. And then when you win, Price Picks has great payouts through Apple Pay for a quick deposit into your account. So download the app and use our promo code Locked on MLB, and they're going to give you a first deposit match of up to $100. Join prize picks today. You can pick more or pick less. It's that easy. Speaking of numbers, we are not fans of taxes, right? We're not fans of the IRS coming after you if you owe taxes. If you owe taxes and you're in trouble, don't stay in trouble. Let the licensed professionals and tax experts at Tax Network USA go to bat for you. They have over 14 years of experience, an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Tax Network USA has saved their clients over $1 billion in tax debt. So whether you owe taxes, you have complicated matters, maybe you put it off and realize that you need to figure this out now, or you have some extra money, you're just not sure what to do with, or if it should be taxed, or how you should report it, you can figure it out with Tax Network USA by calling this number, 1-800-549-1000, or visit tnusa.com slash locked on. Mike, we spent some time with our buddy Jeff Carr, the host of Locked On Reds, about the Reds and Angels linking up for a potential trade, and specifically, talked about how the Halos... Uh, might trade Taylor Ward to the Reds because that's somebody Jeff was interested. Here's that conversation right now. Taylor Ward is now the guy that I'm looking at because, quite frankly, he would up the profile of this outfield significantly because the Reds outfield is just straight bad this year. Yeah, Taylor Ward is leading the Angels in home runs and RBIs. He's been playing a left field position and some DH for the Halos. And what you get with Taylor Ward is two more years of control. He's 30 years old and his arbitration number was 4.8 million. So you're going to get him at a cheap cost. He's going to be somebody that will contribute. Taylor Ward is a piece. He's somebody that if you surround him with really good players, he's going to look like a phenomenal guy. But on this team right now, he's the best. And we have Logan O'Hoppy. We have Zach Neto. They're learning. Mike Trout, of course, is injured. Rendon's injured. So he's the best piece. When Taylor Ward's the best, it's not good for him and it's not good for your team because Taylor Ward is your classic just enough type of player. Like in the outfield, his UZR, ultimate zone rating, is zero, which means that he's not showing off, not lagging behind, right? And so he's he is going to be somebody, though, that is going to not dive. And if he does dive for a, for a ball, it's going to look foolish. He's going to be somebody that's not going to look like he's hustling for Angel fans. It's, it's a different version of Garrett Anderson. Anderson always uh. got critiqued in the outfield is not hustling, not running because his emotion was always at zero. You never knew if he was mad or upset or glad or happy. And that's Taylor Ward. The piece with Taylor Ward that you will get though, is he's somebody that if he gets hot, he is going to help carry your team for a few weeks, maybe even a month. And he's got a great eye at the plate. So he's going to draw a lot of walks. He can hit lead off or he can bat fourth in the lineup. And so a trade for Taylor Ward would be a benefit, I think to the Reds with all of the injuries that they have in the outfield thousand percent and that makes me really happy that we at least landed on one of them there because yeah that 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 is something that the reds need very badly and consistently uh, consistency in the lineup also in fact i remember there was a conversation with nick crawl reds president of baseball operations probably about a month ago and and the reporter was trying to lead him to the conclusion of, yes, we're going to look for outfielders. But mm. he kept saying, oh, we're just looking for consistency. We're looking for the kind of player that can bring consistency to this lineup. Yeah, I think that with the Halos, you're probably going to get um, more back if they did package like a Taylor Ward and a Carlos Estevez, and they sent them to, let's say, the Reds. Some of the names that I looked at when I looked at the prospects were Cam Collier and Hector Rodriguez. Reese Hines was another name that caught my attention as well. The, the thing that I think the Angels are going to be looking for are ready now guys, guys that are going to be uh -huh. up at the major league level in 2025. However, I don't think that it's bad. And I think John would agree with me. I don't think it's bad to have some guys marinate in the minor leagues a bit because they just haven't had that. The only question for the angels is, will they be able to develop them? They haven't had 
guys in the minor leagues developing over the last few years because they've brought them right up to the major league level. And there isn't super, there isn't a lot of confidence from angel fans that they can develop these players. Yeah. You look at something like the Brandon Marsh for Logan O'Hoppy trade and the angels reap the benefit of the fact that Logan O'Hoppy was in the Philly system for as long as he was. And by the time he came over, they gave him a look-see at the end of 2022. Then he comes into 2023 as their starting catcher and personally selected by Shohei Otani. Like, I want to pitch to that guy. I like that guy. Then he got the torn labrum, so he was out for most of the season last year. Came back, hit pretty well when he did. He showed some power, and now he's behind the dish every night. So if I'm thinking about those kinds of trades then it's going to be those ready now players that had the benefit of being in somebody else's system. I think Perry Manassian does that with the draft picks as well, because these college guys have some pretty good quote unquote minor league development because they're in these excellent college systems. Uh, So in terms of uh, guys who are close to the majors, I think that's what the angels prefer. But look at this point, I think anybody is on the table. And I think if the angels are smart, they'll go after Anybody they can, especially guys like Cam Collier. I was even looking at at Sal Stewart, who was also mm-hmm. kind of, you know, often talked about in the same conversation as Cam Collier. They love their guys with who make contact. And so I'm looking at a lot of these guys with good hit tools, and that's something that they emphasize because they want – I don't know, Mike. Maybe you, maybe you agree. It seems like they kind of want to get back to social ball a little bit like yeah. like put the yeah. ball all over the field lay some bunts down that sort of thing and i like that kind of baseball to be honest with you me me too me too that played well for them back in the day that's for yeah sure. it only got them <laughs> yeah. a world series right? <laughs> <laughs> some, something about that ring just makes everything uh seem good um but no okay so let's say this um there there's there's gonna be some hate for this but instead of the quantity Let's say we do this, Jonathan India, mm. Mm. and we'll throw in. Let's say we'll do Lion Richardson and Reese Hines. Mm. Ooh, how many years of control does uh, the, India have left? Uh, I think he's got got a, got a couple of years. He's a guy, and 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 I think that there are a lot of Reds fans that every time he does well, and and quite frankly, I love watching him play. So mm-hmm. I I wouldn't like love the idea of training him, but he is a guy that when Matt McLean is healthy, he's a man without a position on this team. Mm-hmm. And, and, and when you look at his his bat, he's definitely a guy that deserves to be in the lineup. So you've got to work on his glove to see exactly where he fits. Hmm. I I also think that on um, of the other guys lion richardson you, you know you you'd have somebody that's ready to pitch for you right now if you really wanted him to and kind of work on some stuff in the major league level and then you could also get Reese Hines up here later this year or maybe early next year i i think that that would be an interesting trade offer as well and and the reds kind of have to look at these big swings if they're going to get multiple years of team control with taylor ward and they're going to fix their outfield, which quite frankly, that needs to be their plan for the next calendar year. Because <laughs> as much as I love Will Benson, and as much as I love TJ Friedel, and as much as I love Jake Fraley, I just don't think that equation is working out for them. And maybe Spencer Steer is a, is a long-term outfield option, but he constantly keeps getting pulled back in the into the infield for multiple reasons. So to to put him into the equation as simply just an outfielder seems to be short-sighted to me. Yeah, I could see the Angels going for a Jonathan India. John actually, John of Locked On Angels, actually was somebody that pushed for that last I year. I am a Jonathan, by the way. <laughs> you are Jonathan. <laughs> Only mom uh, calls me that, by the way. Right, no, no, no H in the name. Uh, but he is somebody that pushed for Jonathan India, and I could see him really holding down second base for us with Neto at short. I think that it would probably, if I'm the Angels, it would probably be a Taylor Ward, Carlos Estevez type of deal instead of a Renjifo thrown in there because I think that they would have Renjifo play third and hold that down and then maybe have a Rendon DH. But I could see a great infield of Renjifo, Neto, and Jonathan India with Nolan Shonawell playing first. I, I I like it. You might get some hate, Jeff, but not from me. I, I like that deal. What do you think, Johnny? <laughs> yeah, I like that deal as well. And, and to see Jonathan India maybe hold it down for a few years until some of these other angel players are, are ready to come up and and maybe take that second base position look the 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 biggest need here 
is is third base. And so if there's a future where the Angels have somebody, I've, I've said it a lot. I don't I don't see a lot of power in their development system, in their in their farm system. So uh, I, to have somebody come on up and, and take that spot in a few years, I think would be excellent. And 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 perhaps if it's not Estevez, it's it's another reliever that you might need, like a like a Matt Moore who hasn't been too great this year, but he did have a great 2023. Uh, but at the same time, I think Carlos Estevez is going to be that highest valued reliever that the angels have to, uh, to trade off. I'd almost think <laughs> Mike, I'd take the deal, but perhaps it's a little bit of an overpay. Maybe it's just cause I don't know the prospects all that well, yeah, but yeah. I think on the reds part, it, it might be a little bit of an overpay, but I understand the situation and the need for Taylor Ward. So I think if, if this were the deal that were to be done, I think the angels would take that, but that's how trades work at the trade deadline, especially right. Like teams yeah. that are looking to get to the playoffs are going to maybe potentially overpay a little bit. Yeah. And the team that's selling is going to benefit and gosh, the angels need some sort of benefit. They haven't had any yeah. sort of benefit in Southern California in years. And the truth is, is that when we've talked about trades, we've looked at teams like the Padres, the Dodgers, the Yankees, those types of teams that have, at least from all indications, a great minor league farm system. And the Angels are going to need to pull from that. If they can get a major league ready player with two minor league guys that are on the precipice of coming to the major league roster, that would be a game changer for this team. So I could see it being an overpay, but I could also see it if you throw in an Estevez to go along with a Taylor Ward. I could see it really benefiting the Reds. So I'm, I'm sold. Who do we need to call? What do we need to do, Jeff? <laughs> let's do it. Let's Let's do it. Now, full disclosure, we had that conversation before Reese Hines debuted yesterday. So after the day he put up, Mike, i will take that deal 10 <laughs> times out of 10. Let's go. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Angels play the Rangers again, 638 Pacific time. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Hey, give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On Angels and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter. And Instagram, if you're watching or listening, come on over to today's show on YouTube. Get in the comments section. We'd love to hear from you. Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? We, we talked a lot about trades, obviously. There's some insider information on who the Angels are listening on and making available. And then there's some players that people are not calling on at all. So we're going to share all of those details with you tomorrow on Locked on Angels. Looking forward to that conversation. Please come back and join us again. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here with us, everybody. And we'll see you back here on... Wednesday. Is Howie Kendrick and Eric Ibar available? Can we <laughs> <trade> for them? <laughs> I wish. Tim Salmon.